My name is Daniel Mount Pleasant. For those of you who do not know me, I grew up on the Tuscarora Indian Reservation in western New York, just outside of Niagara Falls. Tuscarora is very unique. It's not your typical, stereotypical uh, reservation. Most reservations are very large. Tuscarora is just very small, very small population, very close to a populated city. But what also is unique about Tuscarora is that 200 years ago, as really a result of the modern missions movement, the result of Cary and the missionary societies that were spawned out of that, Tuscarora became very, there was a lot of evangelism that went on on Tuscarora and there was a heavy Christian influence in the 1800s especially. And so I have the privilege of knowing and being in a family with many, many believers. My grand, seeing my grandparents grow up, studying the Bible. I have that image in my head of my grandfather and my parents just always in the word, always going to church. And that is just the first grace that the Lord has given to me, just a family who is dedicated to the Lord and who has been constantly praying for me, supporting me while I've been out here. Even though I grew up in a Christian home, I wouldn't say I was saved until college. Went to Cedarville University in Ohio. And there, by God's providence, working really through my pride, and that's a whole nother story, he landed me at a, a church, a solid church, with a guy who had, he didn't graduate from TMS, but he was at Grace for a number of years, and so he was faithfully expositing uh, the Word of God. And the Lord landed me at that church, and being under faithful preaching of the Word, God brought me to a point where I saw my sin. God led me to a place of repentance. He gave me a love for Christ, a love for his church, and a love for his word. It was there serving there with those elders that they encouraged me to, to consider seminary, and so I did. While I've been here, the Lord has just provided abundantly. When I was at, in undergrad, my major was mathematics. And I was far enough along that track that I wasn't going to change majors or anything when I considered coming to seminary. But when I was coming out, my dad drove out with me, and I had enough room in my Honda Accord to either bring my dad or my last box of books. And so I decided to leave my math books at Cedar in Ohio because I'm not going to need those. That math is done. And by God's providence, the vast majority of my jobs that he, he gave to me we're all math related. <laughs> so two, after two months of being here in that struggle of looking for work, wondering what am I going to do, how am I going to stay out here, how am I gonna... the Lord provided an opportunity to be an adjunct instructor at the Master's College, and I've been able to do that for the last four years, and I continue to do that, just teaching the gen ed classes, and it's just been a great privilege and provision from the Lord. Also. Not only did you give a little bit of money, they give you three free meals a week. And as a bachelor, that's like half of my, you know, my finances for meals. <laughs> the Lord has just provided in so many ways, and that's just one story. He's provided just finances for when the car broke down. I was driving one time, and my harmonic balancer fell off. And then I learned what a harmonic balancer was <laughs> in putting it back on. The Lord's provided some just great friendships, great guys that I've lived with, guys who've encouraged me, guys who've exhorted me, guys who've rebuked me of my own sin, and they've been a great blessing, as so many of, of you have throughout the years, students, faculty in general. I would just encourage men as you relate to each other, single guys, get to know the married guys, you need them, but never tell them you're busy, because if they got three jobs and three kids, you're not busy, because their assignment is still better than yours. Right? And so, but get to know each other, get to know the single guys, married guys, married guys, and get to know each other. Get to know our faculty. There's some amazing men. Certain ones will buy you lunch. But I would just want to just read one passage of scripture that's often come to mind during seminary that a certain admissions counselor who will go nameless, shared with me four years ago. And that's Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 2 and 3. Moses writes, You shall remember all the way which Yahweh your God has led you in the wilderness these 40 years, 
that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. He humbled you and let you be hungry and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you understand that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by everything that proceeds from the mouth of Yahweh. Now, of course, we're, we're not Israel, and hopefully it doesn't take you 40 years to get through seminary. But we can relate to this because all everything we face, whether it's health issues or car issues, finances, everything we face in seminary stresses the fact that we need to depend on the Lord. And if we don't learn now, we won't learn in the pastorate one day. So future plans after seminary, I've been accepted to the THM program in Bible exposition, so I'll probably be taking about two years to work through that. And then lastly, brothers, if I can just encourage you men, especially you brothers who are graduating or still here, any of you alumni, as you consider missions in the local church, I would just encourage you, look to the reservations. Look to the reservations, they need the gospel. They need Christ above all else. And so if you look to the reservations, if you find Christians, exhort them, encourage them, pray for them. And if you don't find any, then like David Brainerd, give your life for them.